All right, guys, back again for the next step of the Legit Wing uh, build. I believe this should be the uh, last so video we got for here the now is uh, our completed uh, laminated wing, uh, laminated top and bottom, all nice and rigid. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get our uh, cavities opened up. Uh, right now we've got uh, everything laminated complete as a, as a one sheet. So um, the way I like to open up my cavities is usually I'll cut diagonal from each corner. To the middle and then find the one point and just connect the two now what this does is when you open it up it gives a little bit of uh, laminate to go around on each one of the uh, sides here so next we'll go to this one this is going to be my video transmitter bay got that nice and open and our receiver bay uh, be careful on the receiver bay not to cut any wires if you've got your servos already installed So we've got that now all opened up and we're going to go ahead and cut out uh, the servo cavities. Now what I like to do with the servo part is I'll actually just cut the whole thing out. Just outline the little square of where it is and cut the whole piece of laminate out there and then just take it off. Because I want to make sure that servo arm is going to move without being hindered by anything. So that's out. So now that you've got these all opened up, if you take your little BEC here, center your servos, and if you plug these in, servo comes alive, centered. Let's get the next servo in. Servo comes alive, and looks like right there is about centered. So I've got my servos now, all set up, no binding, uh, no catching on anything. So that's good. Now let's get the uh, little cutouts cleaned up. So what I'll do is take my hot iron again and basically just use it to work down the little bays. get it nice and uh, stuck to the edges there get it on here to the servos and then same thing with the battery bay just get it all nice and down uh, might want to be careful not to touch the foam if you painted it because what will happen is it'll get some goop on the end of the the foam will kind of melt on the end of your iron and uh, you could get it a little bit sticky and it's not going to run very smooth so we've got our base cut out there this part's a little tricky because we got wires in there but uh, just take your time, get it all nice and laminated, down, clean, and out of the way. So we've got those opened up now, and uh, everything's, everything's all opened up, ready for installation. So the next step, what I want to do here is install my Elevon, so I know where to uh, attach my control rods. Okay, so we want to install the Elevons now. Um, if you remember earlier how we did our elevons, our elevons are now a left and a right. So the way you want to set up is your elevons is find the little uh, notch we made in the soft side, or I mean in the uh, angled side, and you're going to line that up to the back of your wing. But you want to make sure the thinner side of the elevon <clears throat> is connected nearest to the motor. So um, in my case, it's going to go like this. So when the elevon moves, it has room to flex down and going up. Should There's be a no couple problem. different ways to do this. Uh, some Sometimes you might want to bring them as close into the possible and leave a gap here so that way it doesn't catch on your winglet or you can run it all the way out to the edge just to give it a nice uh, cleaner look. In my case I'm just going to run it uh, about a quarter of an inch from the um, all the way from the, uh, the edge where the winglet would go and then just kind of measure it up here. Now the best way to attach these is use the Scotch heavy duty packaging tape. Uh, you can get this in about eight rolls from Costco, I believe. Very inexpensive, very, very strong, and extremely uh, ad adheres to the wings. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and <clears throat> start with one side first. What I like to do is get my packaging tape, 
kind of measure where it's going to go, cut it, and then put it at about halfway on the elevon. So you've got the other half there. Get that connection there. And then this part, just basically line them up. If you pull this back a little bit, you can uh, have it so where it doesn't stick and you can kind of line it up to where it needs to line up. So I've got about a quarter inch there and it's about lined up there. Just make sure it's nice and flat uh, and flush against the, the wing here. And just push down the tape. And again, starting from the middle, working your way out, we'll make sure you don't get any wrinkles or air pockets. Now, this should be enough to hold it on there. You shouldn't need any more than this. However, if you want to get that extra safety bonus, that extra uh, uh, safety uh, tape on there, what you would do then is line up your, your uh, winglet, make sure it's all nice and snug, fold it over all the way, make sure this part is flush right here, and do the same thing, just put a piece of tape uh, right about here and over. I'm very confident this is uh, going to stay there, so I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. moving Elevon and this is not going to come off. This is pretty durable. Um, I usually trust it with just one but if you want that added safety and add two on the bottom you can do that. So let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the build. In your kit you're going to get a little um, uh, parts bag. It's going to have your control horns and it's going to have your uh, clevises to attach to the uh, uh, to the control horns and there's also some little clips here some right angle clips um, and these I'll show you how to use these they are very simple to use and they're actually pretty durable uh, they actually make sure that they, they get a nice connection to the uh, your control Turbo. rods you're gonna get two control rods I just have a bundle of them in my hand and they're gonna be cut uh, pretty much to the length but you're gonna need to maybe trim them down just a little bit more one side is threaded that, thread, that threaded side gets your metal clevises. It gets the uh, metal clevises and they just thread right onto the control rod, the 256 rod. Okay, so we're going to attach the uh, metal clevis to the control rod. Seems pretty simple enough. I got a really cool trick that'll help you out here. What I do here is um, I'll use some pliers to just get the. Uh, the clevis threaded on there, just starting the thread. Then I grab my drill gun. I mean, you can do it however you like, but I don't want to sit there and thread that all day. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take my pair of pliers, just hold the end of it here, and just kind of watch it. And you see it come, and you see it thread through. And I like to thread it in about, uh, uh, I'd say about another quarter inch out through the clevis. So now that we got our control rods all set up, I'm going to show you guys how to connect them to the servo arms. So if you have your servo arms, in my case I've already done it, but uh, sometimes they um, will fit your servo uh, horns, sometimes they won't. If they don't, the best way to do it, in my opinion, I mean, you could do it uh, however, you could take a drill bit and just drill it out. I take a lighter and heat this up really nice and hot, uh, almost to the point where it's glowing. Figure out where I'm going to go and just kind of stick it in there and then pull it right back out. And that keeps the hole nice and tight to where uh, this will connect onto where I need it to go. Uh, so there's no play in the uh, servo horn. All right, so what we're going to do here is... Um, I always try to do a, a quick, like a, a dry fit almost, of where I'm going to stick my control horns. So I'm going to be right about here. So what I'll do is I'll take my servo horns, I'll put the screws in it already. Right. So I got my clevis in there. These things are uh, kind of springy, they're really nice and tight. They sh you shouldn't have any problems of these coming out. Uh, but if you want to add that extra security, what you could do is you can cut out uh, just a very tiny little bit of um, fuel tubing and run it over here just to add that or some guys like to put heat shrink tubing. I don't find the need for either one. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here, kind of lay it out where it's going to go. I've got my screws uh, already into the spot that I know that are already into the control horn, the Dubro control horn. 
kind of get them nice and level. And the great thing about this balsa wood is it's kind of soft. So once you get that lined up in there, I just kind of depress it a little bit. Now I know where I need to drill my two holes for my control horn. So I've got that side down already. And we're going to run this side. Should be about the same. You could be precise if you like, but uh, I've always just done it this way. Done an educated guess. And it's turned out pretty good. So I'm going to be right about here. You do want to be back a little bit from the edge because if you remember we added uh, we added the notch in the back here. So if you're before that notch, you're just going to drill through and you're not going to get enough meat. So um, if you like, you can even run it center, you know, center the uh, spot that you're at right here. It's going to move very, it's going to move it very nice and uh, smooth. So you don't have to worry about getting too far too back. Just don't go too far back because that'll limit your throws. So just double checking my areas that we're going to go ahead and screw these down into and like I said that balsa wood is soft if you press hard enough you can even uh, puncture a hole in there you can either do it like how I just did with a control rod and puncture that hole all the way through in there or you could use a drill gun however you uh, see fit um, I find the easier the better so balsa wood is nice and soft so you kind of get that in there pretty nice and uh, easily okay so now we're gonna go ahead and put these in their spot just kind of dry fit them and I'll show you how to attach the control rod to the servo horn you could do it one of two ways if you have a z-bend like I do you can just put your z-bend at the spot where you're gonna be and just bend it and then you can stick that into your servo. But in my case, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use the uh, included hardware. So what I like to do is pretty much find out where you're gonna be, where your hole's gonna be. And then take your pliers here. So my hole's gonna go right about there. You don't have to be exact exact because we left some room in the uh, um, threaded side to make some adjustments if we need to make some fine adjustments. So my, my rod is going to go in right about there. So what I'll do is I'll make a right turn. Just make a right angle bend right there. And then once you make that right angle bend, you're going to cut, you're going to cut that about a quarter of an inch. See, now we've got that connected in there. Then you're going to take your little elbow that we gave you and you're going to stick your control rod in there. You're going to stick the other end in through here and lock it down. Now you've got your control surfaces all set up. Um, mine's going to be a little bit flimsy right now because I haven't threaded the bottom. But uh, I'll go ahead and do that now. So what you're going to do is uh, pretty much drive the screws down until I can feel them with my hand. Take the little back plate here and line it up to the screws in there and as you can see I've got my screws coming out through here and we're going to tighten that down if the uh, screw comes out to be a little bit longer you can just take your Dremel or uh, blade just cut the ends of it off if you don't want that to drag but as you can see got my control horn set up got my control rod set up sounds a lot more complicated than it is but it's actually not at all, all right. And that's a pretty, I mean, that's pretty strong right there. Pretty much going to pick up the wing with it. So we've got our control surfaces all done. There isn't really anything else you'll need to do. And uh, with the right angle clips that we add, it makes it nice and simple. You get a nice durable uh, setup there. I'm getting a little play from my servo here because I used a thicker rod. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and attach the other side, and then we'll move on to the All next right, step. Now that we've got our control surfaces complete and done, uh, we're going to go ahead and work on the motor mount. The motor mount may seem a little tricky, but it's actually pretty simple. 
we're going to go back again to our water, bottom wing bed. And once you put the aircraft in its bottom wing bed, this is how it flies. So this table now is the level surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our blade and we're going to cut right in the center of the wing. I'm going to cut right here. As you can see where we glued in, I'm just going to put a little slit right here so I can kind of see where I'm going to go. And right in the center there, that should be about enough. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and lay it flat on the table here and just make sure that I am cutting into the wing perpendicular to the a uh, parallel to the table. You don't want to have it uh, up at all. It's a little bit hard in the middle because we have that hot glue there. So I've got my little slit here. And we want to go ahead and get that in there get down in there as far as we can and make sure we have it nice and open. Okay, so once we've got that cut in there and you see that the blade is pretty much parallel with the table, got it nice and deep in there, we're going to take our motor mount, the included motor mount, and we're going to just kind of dry fit it in there. And as you can see, I need to go in just a little bit more in the middle here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and Cut it just a little bit more, a little deeper in there. I want this part of the motor mount to sit flush with the back of the wing. So there it is, it's all in there nice and flush, as you can see, all the way up. And if you measured your carbon fiber rod, it should come up right about almost budding to the carbon fiber rod. So now you want to make sure that uh, the holes line up. With the center of the wing and that the motor mount sits completely vertical up and down with the uh, uh, table. You want to make sure it sits perpendicular from flat surface. So in my case I need to bend mine a little bit and that's very easy to do just kind of give the aluminum just a little bit of pressure here. This will ensure the correct thrust angle. You want to make sure that when you're uh, punching it it doesn't creep up on you or it doesn't go down. So I've got a nice flat finish here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and glue my motor mount in. And there's two ways to do this. You could either use the hot glue, but you got to be very quick to get in there and make sure that it's aligned, that it's centered, that it's all nice and dialed in. Or you could use some Amazing Goop. Uh, Amazing Goop is available at Walmart in the crafts department. Very uh, um, inexpensive. It's about three bucks a tube. Grab my so little all in here. Get my amazing goop here. Got a little bit of residue on the end here. And just stick it in here in the hole and pump some goop in there. And don't be shy. So now that I've got my goop all filled into that surface, you can put a little bit on the uh, actual motor mount itself if you like. As you can see, mine's already starting to ooze out of the uh, compartment over there. All right, so we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna scoop up the rest of that there. And just work it in there nice and tight. Bring it in all the way flush. Make sure it's lined up with your wing. Got some excess scoop here. And it looks like I'm dialed in there. I'm perpendicular to the table. Need to give it a little bit of an angle here. All right. So we've got that set up in there. I'm going to take our wrench, clamp it in, and we're going to let it sit for, um, it'll probably be pretty rigid in about 20 minutes, but uh, I like to let it sit overnight, usually is a, is a good uh, indication, at least two to three hours. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sit right now, and then we'll come back and uh, install our motor ESCs. We'll get our receiver in there, we'll get our video gear in there, and we'll continue on the build.